two sets of 11 players took part into the game of football that happened down in Spain as United was beaten by Cadiz by four goals to two. The first half was 2-1 in favor of Cadiz and the second half was again 2-1 in favor of Cadiz making it 4-2 in favor of Cadiz in the entire 90 minutes game. Now as you know every time United plays a game of football we come up with what we call the player ratings and right now I'm really honored to come here and be letting you know the player rating, ratings of the players of United but I'm going to go ahead and really give you like 13 players that's it because I feel I don't want to go on and rate others because they were at a different stage of football together especially especially the eight players that played in the second half apart from Mino, Savage and uh, and uh, Tom Heaton but the rest were were exposed to the unusual situation that they had never been in so I really feel like in the first 11 I'm really going to go out and rate every player but in the second 11 that played in the second half i'm going to rate mino tom heaton and obviously and obviously charlie savage that's it the rest i'm not going to go on and really and really and really rate them so welcome to united matters channel rock and david is my name i believe last video of the day and tomorrow we are here to come back with some hit stories as far as Cody gapko is concerned what eric ten Hag reacted to the players of manchester united so much pissed off with the players and obviously he said i'm going to go on and blame them because that's not how we are supposed to play they played sluggishly they never pulled out the a game because i believe that first 11 if at all they never switched off for the first 15 minutes they would have really put this game to bed in the first half and these young ones would have come in through and really just maintained the score all else add on more goals as you saw mine scoring in the 48th minute let's start off with the goalkeeper the brave car i'm going to give him a five out of ten he was he was average that's it he was average and uh the manager gave a reason as to why he really brought him into the starting 11 of manchester united that stated the player had been so good when united was playing against aston villa you remember that game very well we beat aston villa by how many goals to nil but sorry by four goals to two that laid us being drawn into the fifth round of the carabao cup with a team known as Burnley that United is going to play on the 21st of 21st of <coughs> December and I believe another reason as to why the brave was in goal it's because the manager knows that he's going to play the first game of United as we are going to play a team which goes by the names of a team which goes by the names of um, Burnley not so so that's the cause as to why he was really brought on and Ten Hag had the following to say about Debrevka. I think he never hinted about exactly why he started, but I believe the reason is simple. He's going to play the first game of the season when it resumes on the 21st of December when the World Cup is done. Now Ten Hag said Debrevka did very well against Aston Villa in the Carabao Cup. We want competition for every position so he's playing tonight and it's a good opportunity for him to get minutes to show what he's capable of. So that's what Ten Hag really said about Debrevka but I believe it's a confirmation that is the man going to be in between the goalposts when United is going to be playing Burnley in the Carabao Cup. Obviously, I'm giving him a 5 out of 4 in this game of football that we played against the team which goes by or a team called <coughs> Cadiz. Right back, Aronman Bisaka, a 5 for me. I'm not going to go <laughs> to a 4. I've seen very many people beating him up because he was very poor. But I believe him being out for very many months of not playing football and not being active. Obviously, two injury spells that he has had. He last played a competitive game when United was playing Liverpool eight minutes. I'm giving him a five. If at all he comes up in the game of Rio Betis and plays like he played today, I'll give him a three. That's it. Because a benefit of doubt has been given to him. He has now him some forty four some forty five minutes in his legs. I believe that can act better when he is into the game of Rio Betis. I think on Saturday. After that left back brandon williams i'm going to give him a six to me i think he performed better than than aaron bisaka if i told you give aaron bisaka a five there is no way to give brandon williams a six out of ten because 
he's, he has never played any game under Eric Ten Hag. If I'm not misquoted, even when they went, we went to the preseason, he was left at Carrington to train because he was coming in from injury. He again sustained another injury, and because he's earning close to is it eighty thousand pounds a week at Manchester United, no team can really buy him for Manchester United because the player doesn't want to go on and take a pay cut on his from his hefty weekly wage that he earns at Manchester United. But United should look out on him because he might be into years of deciding whether he's a United player or not a United player. And even Brandon Williams should do himself a, a service. If at all he does not impress the manager, Eric Ten Hag, then he should go all out and call for a loan. His agent should look out for teams that are really going to help him be a better player. You see, players might, might be uh, might be eyeing playing into into the Premier League but look at Dejan Spence who was playing in the championship and he made his way up to to the Premier League he was on loan at Nottingham Forest Middlesbrough never wanted him and yet Middlesbrough was playing in the same league with Nottingham in the championship then when he led Nottingham to the Premier League. Obviously, Tottenham went in for him and they paid some good £25 million for him. So, I believe that's what Brandon Wisdom should look up to. You should look at a team that has a potential of qualifying, that is the top six. Then you go all out and play alone. Then you are going to get your desirable move and they will buy you the amount of money that you would go on and really get paid at your club, especially as far as the weekly wages are concerned. So, 6 out of 10 for me. Um, Tengi Mengi, I'm giving him a 5. I think he was not all that erratic, as people are really talking about, <laughs> because there is nothing much that he had to do to stop those goals, because those goals resulted from the player bringing in the cross from the left, the left wide area and right wide area being unmarked all not pressing that player they had no pressure of putting in those crosses and Arunan Bisaka made a very big error made a very big error in marking that far post the first goal and the second goal so I believe he would have gone ahead to do the needful and saved United in their face so I don't see any mistakes that rush that Tengi Mengi did. He's coming in from injury. He has never played with Viktor Lindelof, not in very, not in any game. So he was playing with a new person. So I believe that really led to him being erratic. Sorry, not erratic. That led to their combination not being so they're supposed to be because it desired more games. And let's see how they're going to perform in the game of Rio Betis over the weekend. Even Lindelof, I'm giving him a 5 out of 10, I believe. They last played a competitive match on the 13th of November. And how many weeks now? 13th, 7th, 17 days, plus, plus 7, 3 weeks almost, almost a month. They've not been playing a game of football and they had just started training recently because they started on Monday. Is it on Monday? I think they started to train on, was it Saturday? Saturday or Sunday? They've trained for three, four days. They had a game to play. I believe it's responsible for their performance today. And I'm giving him a five out of ten. Scott McTominay, I believe the same thing is really affecting him. Five out of ten for me. Never had allowed to do the midfield, but he failed to do what a CDM is supposed to be doing for the club. Even the second goal, you expect Scott McTominay to be in that position where that second goal is scored from, especially the finish of that goal, pressing that ball in the back of the net. He, we desired more from Scott McTominay, but we didn't. So I believe that is something that Scott McTominay needs to go on and improve, and the manager is going to call him all out to go on and do this. But I believe they were not on the field of play. They were not training, according to me, especially Scott McTominay. He looked like he was not training. So I'm giving him a 5 out of 10. Zidane Iqbal, <laughs> my best performer on the field of pitch today. And uh, he had lots of things to do. He controlled that midfield. He never put a foot wrong. His passing was elite. When you look at very many things that I really noted down for this player, I want to go out and really note them. His pass progression was perfect. His dribble progression was perfect. He's press resistant. When he gets that ball, he really knows that it's his. Even if you come from any direction, his side mirrors that scan, that, that are, 
his side mirror that do the scanning are always on he can send you the wrong way and then pass that ball to the side that he wants you saw him do that to a player who goes by the name of Fabinho in that game where we beat Liverpool by four goals to one in the Thailand Cup you know that very well then he has a fast foot according to me he can do anything his skill set is really unmatched you get he really looked better his passing range was really great and obviously he was combative and he was a player who had to go in and really make it hard for players in that midfield area of a team which goes by the names of Cardiff. And I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. Responsible for the first goal we scored, brought down in the penalty area, and Martial took a penanka to make it 2-1, 2-1 for United. So I'm giving Zidane Iqbo an 8 out of 10. He was really great. He was really great. And for young players like him, they deserve to be hailed when they do this because it's rare to find players at his age, because I think he's 19, 18, 19, doing that at that level. There are few players. There are few players. Look at Judy, look, look at Judy Bellingham. At the age of 16 was the championship, making wonders and giving his agent bragging rights. He's 19 right now at the World Cup, nearing 20, but he's doing things that no one expected him to be doing. So I believe it's a better side for him. He should just continue to go on and do the needful and make sure that he keeps the ground leveled and he never or never to put the tools down because this is one of the most prospective players I've seen play for the team which goes by Manchester United and he's coming in from the Academy of United. Ten Hag is a huge admirer and a big believer. Now the question is, are they going to let him go out on loan or he's going to stay at the first team? I believe where we are, it's hard for him to penetrate, but I think next season, space will be there for him because the players like Freddy are not going to be having room to play at Manchester United. At the age of 19, 20, he might have gotten everything to start to play for United. If at all, they fancy a loan for him, they are already an, there is already an admirer. Michael Carrick, remember, he was made the permanent coach of <coughs> Middlesbrough. He wants Dan Igbo to go in and play for Middlesbrough, and obviously, I used to think that he's not in the right hands of Carrick, but according to how Carrick was playing that area, I believe he has a lot to add to his game. So it's all up to Eric Ten Hag, Darren Fletcher, and Michael Carrick to sit together at the same table and discuss the future of this player in the names of um, Zidane Iqbo. But he was my best player on the field today, and 8 out of 10 is what I'm guaranteeing him. Danny Van Bink, average 5 out of 10 for me. He looks like he's not yet back to where he's supposed to be. But I believe he's not far off from where he's supposed to be because Ten Hag said he makes good runs, but he is not got on the ball enough. I never saw him put a, a foot wrong, but how, how many times did Scott McTominay and Igbo get him the ball? That's it. Because the only way a central attack midfielder is going to be all up into the position that you want and give you the output you want, you have to get him on the ball in the final third. That's it, because that's where he dictates the game a lot. You get his effect on the game is so much in the third, in the final third. So in the second third, players like Scott McTominay and Zidane Iqbo should get him the ball. And when you get him the ball, you leave the rest of the doings for him. So I'm giving him a 5 out of 10. I want to see him do better because he has already played three games already this season. But obviously, he was not being given the big game, the ball a lot. After that, let's go to, to Anthony Elanga. He's one of those players that really comes in, works a lot, but I believe he needs to go on and know that running with the ball is outdated. You should only and only commit yourself with running the ball unless there is space or secondly, when you know that, you can go ahead and really beat the players you're going to find. He tracks back well, but every time he gets that ball, he needs to be taught that sometimes you should go for a simple pass. You shouldn't really go in for those uncalled for runs, aimless passes. I saw him put a ball thrice wrong, trying to look for Anton Martial, meaning that his passing is really lacking. That is something that Eric Ten Hag should go on and really teach this player. Secondly, this player has always come out 
and his fans to complain, especially his fans that maybe he should be playing better onto the right, onto the left, and he's being played on the right. Now today, the first 20 minutes, he was playing off the right, and Hag told him, go onto the left, let Ganacho come on the right. And he couldn't deliver anything from that side. That's why I'm giving him a 5 out of 10. Then, Alejandro Ganacho, one positive I've seen today that I had not seen in his game is that he can play on the right, attacks the middle midfield, he played there very well. And I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. Every time he got the ball, he was explosive. He was threatening. His submission and commitment was really great. I believe we have a player that is going to be one of the best in the world, if at all he's handled and managed very, very well. That's so, after that, there is a player mm, in Anton Martial. I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. Scored a penanka. He had a shot on target before. That forced the goalkeeper to fist it in the corner. And the reason was simple. For him not really scoring more goals. It's simple. Did the midfield create enough? They didn't already. So that's why I'm really giving him a 6 out of 10. Then the other players to judge. Tim Heaton. 5 out of 10. And he had nothing to do to stop on those goals. 5 out of 10. Then Charlie Savage. Charlie Savage, I'm giving him a 6 out of 10 today. He played very well. You know, he was facing players that have a different class or level at him. One will say Rokani, but he was in he was in the preseason, played against Liverpool, played against Fabinho, uh, he played against Melbourne, he played against um, Aston Villa. You get he played against uh, Roy Volcano. Let me tell you this. This player is really great, but the problem is one. Spanish players are technically gifted. The League of Spain is full of technically gifted players. That calls for a player like Savage to go on and face something that has never faced. And secondly, he came into this game when the team that he was playing for was behind by a goal to nil. He had to try to play high, and if he found himself trying to shoot thrice at the edge of the yards box area of the opponent. And that is something that I really believe showed me that this pot the potential of this guy is really immense so i'm giving him a six out of ten now the lastly i'm talking about kabi maeno this guy is said to be the new paul pogba at manchester united tall energetic scored a very good goal in this game of football and obviously i'm giving him an eight out of ten obviously this guy is a revelation he's one of those players that i really believe are going to dominate the midfield of united provided eric ten Hag doesn't really leave United. If Ten Hag stays, Savage, Charlie Maino, and uh, Zidane Iqbo, those three are going to be controlling the midfield of United in the next coming years. For the next 10 years, they might be the each thing to talk about. And you might find that it's going to be hard for United to go out and buy another expensive midfielder because the talent in these boys is really base. If at all they can match it up like Alejandro Garnacho and break through to the first team, that is going to be great for us because we need to find ourselves risking the boys to play into those games of football. So, Eric Ten Hag, 6 out of 10. Can't blame him because he brought in the teams. The players had to go on and do the needful. But obviously, they couldn't really see themselves winning against Cadiz. So, thank you very much for watching and Tell me the player ratings for each and every player that I've rated, I've rated. 14 players 14 players are the ones i've rated so you can as well tell me who else i've not rated that really excited you in that game of football rock and david is my name last video it is a sign out for now guys see you letters and good night i cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ and don't forget to subscribe guys want to hit 10,000 subscribers we are less by only only 800 and i believe in just one week we've managed to raise close to 200 subscribers. What does that mean? We can hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of this month. Not so. I'm out.